Hi everyone, my name is Cynthia. Let's talk books. Today I'm here to talk about books numbers 36 to 40 that I read in 2023. Um, and let's get right to it. The first book, uh, well, the first book on my list, book number 36, is The Haunting of Alejandra by V. Castro. I have a dedicated review to uh, this book, so I will go ahead and link it below if you're interested. But I basically loved it. It is a book that it uses the myth of La Llorona and merges it with the life of a woman today. And, but takes us back through her like uh, indigenous ancestor that has this first meeting with what is now the being that is haunting her. Uh, what really intrigued me about this book though is the way it merges motherhood and ideas of motherhood's and women's role because Alejandra, uh, when we first meet her in chapter one, is struggling really hard with being a stay-at-home mother. That is not what she had envisioned. Um, she is, it was also not her choice in that her husband kind of pressured her to not work. And she loves her children, but she is stuck in this role that she doesn't want and doesn't know how to extricate herself from that. And so the myth of the Llorona is a stand-in for so much going on in her life. Um, and what I really, really, truly loved here is all the layers that V. Castro adds in here because in order to escape both La Llorona and her marriage and this feeling of being stuck, um, Alejandra has to go through th to therapy. And so there's just so much to dissect and um, Latinx horror has some amazing, amazing themes and I just um, really enjoyed that book. Next book on my list, I have a physical arc of, this is Our Migrant Souls, A Meditation on Race and the Meanings and Myths of Latino by Hector Tobar. So this is a, uh, I did receive this book for free. The arc was sent to me and I don't remember exactly how it came to me, but I know I didn't um, request it. So one of two things, either the publisher reached out to me uh, and asked if they could send it and I said yes, or it was sent to me unsolicited. Either way, I am so glad that this book made it to my hands because it is just fantastic. It's a popular uh, nonfiction. So even though uh, Hector Tobar is an academic, I think he writes in a very approachable way. And one of the things that he's doing in this book is missing his own biography with stories of uh, his students and history and just different elements of what it means to be Latino in the U.S. And it talks about like everything from, you know, uh, for example, what do we do with communities like the Cuban community, which tend to vote and have like different um different approaches in, in the community than, than other Latinos in, uh, in, in the Latino community in the U.S. to also the legal designation of Latino uh, throughout history, the way in which uh, queer identities challenge this idea of what it means to be Latino, the way in which um, second, third generation uh, people experience Latinidad differently, um, the, the different elements of like race within the Latino community. So basically what Hector Tobar is showing is that the Latinidad in the U.S. is built on very, very shaky ground, right? It is a colonial relationship with the U.S. in that uh, immigrants that come from Latin America are coming uh, to the U.S. and experience have already experienced a colonial relationship with the U.S. and then within the U.S. there is still a colonial um, relationship uh, many times, but it's complicated by assimilation, it's complicated by the diversity within Latin America, it's complicated by race, by class, by going back home and those that can go back home and then what their experience is like when they try to visit home or, or try to return home. It is just, it's a really amazing book and it had me right from the beginning because Tobar in his introduction talks about like the different conversation he has with students and what like he hopes students get out of his class and I just... Like that, that, like, I was just like, yes, this is it. This is exactly, exactly. I want to use at least one of the chapters from this book in my class on race and ethnicity in U.S. history because I think he does a really good job of summing up 
a lot of what is happening when, with the term Latino, right? For example, uh, on page six, he says, you and I and countless authors and activists use Latino or Latinx or Hispanic to express an allegiance among peoples, a shared experience. But in the intimate spaces of our friendships and your homes, you, know, you are not inclined to use these terms. Then when you are asked the annoying question, what are you, you are more likely to answer with something more specific and more satisfying, something closer to your lived experience. I am Mexican, you might say, even if you were born in the United States, or my father's Salvadorian and my mother's Irish, or I'm from a mixed status family, or I'm New Yorican, or you might say, as many of my students have said over the years, I am from South Central LA, or I'm Blaxican, because your identity has been born of the contact between people of African American and Latin American descent, something common in all the cities of the United States. I just love that. I just loved the way he um, uh, lays that out. I, I think I like I love the way he is speaking to his students like I felt throughout the entire book like he was speaking not just to like his generation or my generation but to a younger generation as they are grappling with what it means to be Latino to be Latin A to be Latinx in the United States and I just felt there was so much uh, beauty in here and I think I highly recommend it especially um, if you uh, want an entryway into navigating the Latino issues in the U.S., I think this is a good one. Uh, there's a couple of really good ones. Maybe I should do a dedicated review to uh, a dedicated video on books that provide really great entryways into this. Um, but I think for even for a specialist, this might be a really good book because he talks so much about his personal life. Right. Yeah. Um, for example, he is making the point that like to be Latino in the U.S. is to have a particular relationship with whiteness and with blackness. And he uses examples of uh, within his own life. So, for example, he grew up in um, in Los Angeles, living next door for some time next to the man who ended up killing Martin Luther King Jr. And so he uses that story to then talk about Latinos in the U.S. caught in between these categories of blackness and whiteness in the U.S. Um, and it, it, it was so good. It was just so good. So I, um, I cannot say enough good things about this book. And I am going to buy a um, completed uh, book, the, the final um, work, because th I have, the, this is an arc, so it's an advanced reader's copy. And usually there are still edits made after they send these out for before the final publishing. And because I want to use it in class, then I need the final copy. <laughs> so... Anyways, very excited to talk about this book with you all. Um, if you have any questions about that book, please let me know down in the comment section. Uh, the next book is Ana Maria in the Fox by Liliana de la Rosa. So ever since I've heard that this book was going to exist, I was so excited. It is a book in which you follow a group of sisters, heiresses, that are fleeing Mexico during the uh, invasion of Mexico by France. So there are a couple of attempts that the French make to try to control Mexico. So this is during the the, um, the Second Empire of Napoleon III. So this is uh, Napoleon Bonaparte's nephew who is sending troops to Mexico to try to reestablish control. He actually sends, you know, one of his uh, family members uh, uh, to try to try to establish him as the king of Mexico. So there's a period of time in which Mexico has a king. Well, these sisters are um, the daughters of the political advisor to Benito Juarez, who was the deposed president of Mexico, who was fighting the French. Mm -hmm. And they have fled to London, where their uncle is uh, trying to raise awareness and support for the Benito Juarez government in Mexico. And uh, the, the girls are given the task of basically representing, representing Mexico in London. And so they are, for the first time, really having the freedom to interact in society without the pressures of 
their father looking over their shoulder. <laughs> uh, and in this first book, we're following the oldest sister, Ana Maria. I, uh, as the oldest daughter in a Mexican immigrant family, I uh, related to so much of what Ana Maria was trying to do here, um, the way Ana Maria is depicted. And Ana Maria is the quintessential oldest daughter who is taking care of her sisters and who is trying to do the right thing at the sacrifice you know at the expense of her personal happiness at times but she is also in this situation in which she has a chance to experience happiness and to do things of for the sole purpose of they make her happy and um and she, the love interest uh, uh the fox is a member of parliament who is biracial he is uh, uh his grandmother was uh an escaped um enslaved woman who made her way to london um and um and then you know has a life there and he is deeply interested in um, the slave trade has already ended, but in putting a stop to to the illegal slave trade that is happening, especially in different parts of the Atlantic. Uh, so he's working on legislation to do that. And um, they once they get to talking, they find a lot of common ground in their political positions. Plus, Ana Maria is the daughter of a politician. So she very much understands our hero, uh, where he's coming from. But she's also like trying to not be caught up in the same thing like in the same kind of relationship that she was with her father of like duty right of having to perform for the public um but the spark between these two just flies this is a, a very um slow paced uh romance like i did find myself wishing that there was more interactions between the hero and the heroine especially especially early on in the story uh, but also this is the first book in a series so uh there's a lot of establishing you know who the sisters are the background the what is happening in mexico and and what is happening in london at this time so uh, and i liked all of that too so it was hard for me to like fault the slow paceness of it when i was enjoying some of that um there is finally a break in the action when the there's a you know country party and uh, once the country party starts i felt like the book switched tones a little bit on me and um and pacing the pace became much more fast paced the kind of villain um it makes a more explicit appearance and things just pick up um i was recently watching kasen's video uh her channel is always doing it when which uh, the vlog in which she talks about reading this book and i think i agree with her that there are some storyline threads that are, are kind of like ignored towards the end of the book presumably i have a feeling that because they will show up in books you know two and three as we get the sister stories it is also very clear who the sisters love interest are going to be um and um i think those um there's a lot of potential there so i'm really looking forward to the next books in the series um and i think if you're interested in uh, this time period in romances that follow um, heroes and heroines who are non-white and um, that bring in that extra flavor. I think this is a good one uh, to pick up. I really had fun with it. The next book that I read uh, was Hollow Beast by Alisa, Alyssa Lynn Val Valdez. This uh, this is going to be another book, <laughs> another first in a series. This one follows a, uh, a Latina um, in New Mexico. And I was so intrigued by this um, heroine because she is a poet and academic who leaves academia in order to become a game warden in New Mexico. Like that is her true passion. Um, her husband has recently passed away and she is raising their teenage daughter and um her family is in new mexico so she has the help of her brother who is a priest and her um i believe uncle who is uh whose job she's taking over when when the story starts well the story starts and she is um there are poachers that she's having to deal with but it turns out that there's also a white nationalist group that's hiding out in the wilderness in new mexico that she polices and it is her job to bring down this white supremacist group 
uh, and uh, just the poetics of this Latina gay warden uh, bringing down this white supremacist uh, group are fantastic. <clears throat> I loved uh, our main character. I love her backstory. I loved her brother. I loved her daughter. Like a lot of the side characters, like key elements in a, this kind of thriller series. Yeah. Um, it just hit the spot for me. Yeah. The only thing for me that was not as strong was the view of this, like the villain in the story. In this book, it's the white supremacist group. Now I have no problem making the white supremacist group the villain. Um, it was just oh, heavy handed at times. Like there are entire chapters from the point of view of these white supremacists and that was really really hard to read i considered dnfing it only because of that like i was like oh my god i do not need to read the perspective of these horrible terrible men uh, unfortunately it is very realistic the depiction of of these particular men and um and so it was difficult to read and to be immersed in their point of view for chapters at a time um, but, but the rest of the story, uh, it was just fantastic and I can't wait to continue reading in the series. And then finally, finally, book number 40, oh, the books I'm reading in 2023 was One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, uh, by Ken Casey. I have ne I never read the book or watched the movie. So when my friend suggested we read this book together, I jumped at the chance. I said, what, that book about, you know, institutionalized people and mental health. Um, let's see what this classic is all about. Um, and what I found is that while the characterization is really interesting, the character development's very interesting, uh, the portrayal of mental health uh, was a bit cliched. It's like all these men in this mental health hospital mm -hmm. and the villain in the story is the one female nurse uh, that kind of runs the place. I, I had no problem with the dynamics as they were like this dynamics of the the patients versus the, the staff, but but the, it gets really icky in the way that like the men talk and interact with this female nurse and mm, yeah I can totally do see like how Jack Nicholson probably did an amazing job in the movie with it again I haven't seen the movie but uh, knowing that Jack Nicholson the character that Jack Nich Nicholson plays I can totally see it in my mind uh, so I will watch the, the movie um, so like really the book for me was like a three-star read that I, and that I won't discourage anyone from reading it. I, I finished the book. There was enough there to keep me interested, um, but it has some significant flaws and I don't think that like I would want to pick it up and reread it at any point. Really, I think there are much better books that deal with the problems within mental health institutions, the whole institutional process and uh, the serious flaws in the way we handle mental health in this country. Um, and this one, so this one I didn't think what, uh, particularly brings any of those elements, you know, gives us particular unique insights into that process that are not better done elsewhere in, in other books. So those are, those are the books, the books numbers 36 through 40 of the books that I'm reading in 2023. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if you've read any of those. Um, let me know if you um, have read One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest because I feel like um, uh, that book used to get assigned a lot in uh, high school courses. I don't know that it still does. But um, yeah, I kind of felt mm, about it and um, I'm willing to bet I'm not the only one. Uh, but if any of these books interest you, let me know as well. I'm happy to talk about them. If you've read them, I really want to chat about them. And uh, thank you for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye.